Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. Hi, this is Jan Lewis. Welcome to be my guest. Today we have Robert Blair, who's also known as the Mayor, and he's the owner of Mayor's Plantation. He grows gorgeous dahlias over in Holliston. Welcome, Mayor. And, you know, I saw the article about you. I think it was, was it one of the Sunday papers? Yes. Um, it showed a picture of you actually out there working with your dahlias. Mm -hmm. And I must have been, it was from Holliston. It must have been the... the um, Metro West Daily News. That's it. And I get a lot of all the Sunday papers. And I said, this is pretty fantastic. You've been doing this for how long? Nine years. Nine years. What were you doing before this, Robert? Uh, actually, I was a mailman for 37 years. You you stood that for 37? 37 years, yeah. Did you like it? Um, I suppose I could have kept doing it. Yeah. Uh, but I said, geez, there's got to be more. Uh, yeah. Let me try something different. What steered you to this? Actually, uh, I was writing for a different uh, newspaper than I own now. Yeah. And my beat was the farm beat. And uh, I would go around to the farms in town, tell everybody what was coming in from the farm. Yeah. One of the farmers said, here, take these, uh, stick them in your garden. And up they came, and I says, wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. So you didn't have to sweat too much to get them to come up. They just, you planted them, were they perennial? These dahlias are gorgeous. Paul, I don't know if you focused in on them or not, but boy, they are gorgeous. Are they perennial? Uh, well, they, they would be if you were in Florida. Yeah. But up here, no. Uh, no. What do you they think? have to be dug. They poke up about, what, May? Well, you put them in in May. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Not fall, the fu not now. No, no, no. Uh, <coughs> and you're supposed to put them in dry soil. Dry soil. I lost 7,500 plants or tubers. This oh. is what you plant. Show them a tuber. Now, I didn't right know what there. this was. That's what it looks like. Looks like somebody's messed up heart. <laughs> yeah, it does. And actually, uh, in the springtime, uh, they're under peat moss in my greenhouse. Yeah. And they will start sending shoots out. And you can actually divide the tubers yeah. with a knife. Mm -hmm. uh, so you might get two, three, four... Is that what those little look like little cocoons are sticking out from it? They're they're, they're baby plants like these are, it, like what, this. What these were, yeah. Those no, no, no. It's not. No. No, no. Um, and actually, <coughs> they tell you uh, at the end of the season, like now when we're digging them up, to leave them in the soil. You're gonna fool this tuber into thinking it's spring because the ground is still warm. Yeah. But up here in the Northeast, don't do we it. don't have the luxury of leaving them in another two weeks. Uh, last year, I started digging on October 1st and was done by Halloween. Last year, we dug up early because we had severe drought. Yeah. Uh, this year, we didn't start till Monday, yeah. so we're actually two weeks behind. Uh, we have about 3,000 of these to dig up. Uh, I don't want to be out there at Thanksgiving. Uh, <laughs> no. It can be cold. It can snow then. So. so you'll go. You'll dig these up now, and then you'll replant them in May. And how long before we get the beautiful flowers? Probably uh, halfway uh, into July. That's that's pretty good. Uh, well, yeah, um, yeah. I have people coming in May saying oh, the day is ready, and I go, no, wow. you can't even see them sticking out of the ground yet. <laughs> how many do you have? Do you think right now? That they're, you must handle a lot of them. You have people working for you, don't you? I have some part, you know, I have uh, college kids at planting time and then weed. Yeah. Of course, they go back to college. Yeah. I have one or two people. Uh, last year, we didn't do a uh, farmer's market at all because of the drought. Sure. This year, we've been able to do Natick every week. The Natick one. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have one over here in Grafton. It's pretty good. We would love it. Uh, you know the Grafton Town Common? Uh, I have done the Grafton Did you uh, like one it? before. It wasn't worth my while okay. uh, to send someone all the way over. Mm -hmm. um, so I keep it to one market. Natick. And I have a tent right 
at the field yeah. where people come and buy. Now, when is the natick? When is the natick? You want me to hold something up, Paul? Which were one of the flowers? Okay, let's see. Let's hold up this. this is, oh my gosh, look at the colors in this. Now don't ask me the names of any of them. I know the name of one, and this is called Dutch Carnival. Uh, the only reason I know that name is because I had so many of them. Oh, so it's not just one one name, one breed of it. It's a lot of them, right? You, they're put into classifications, and this is small. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's supposed to be larger but at this time of year yeah. now it's been cold out the stems get scrawny as a matter of fact this one broke on the way in okay uh, we're not getting as much sunlight um but the larger ones are called dinner plates right because they resemble a dinner plate yeah. uh this size here is uh okay. called decorative size uh, oh you know i could see this right in the center of a very elegant restaurant or dine you know uh when you even at home in your in your dining room your formal dining room actually all of them this one i love well purple's my one of my favorite colors and i can see this dressed up with some bling bling like you know um shiny things wrapped around the utensils putting some silver bling around you know i know <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm seeing it's that. a woman thing <laughs> <laughs> you know, i know it i'm seeing it you put these together today though you did a great job with the colors uh, job. It's pretty simple. I, I tell my help, uh, just keep alternating the colors. Yeah. You know, because if someone's new, they'll put all white on this side and all red. I said, no, 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 no red, no. white, red, white. And then this, of course, purple with a white purple. To say, you know. Purple. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, a few of these came off the same plant, and they'll do that once in a while and surprise you and go, you know, you have all this color, and there's one of that. So the t one tuber we just saw that one tuber big old brown thing that can sprout various colors, right? Mm -hmm. It can have various. So now you said <clears throat> you're over there at what six thirty in the morning at the farm? Uh, in the summertime. In the summer, yeah. Uh, not this time. It's too cold. Yeah, it's I'm next to my wood stove at six thirty. You're next to the wood stove, <laughs> right? And you were saying when he, when uh, when Robert came in, he said, "I'm glad it didn't frost last night." I'm like, "Yeah, we wouldn't have seen. I don't. Would we have seen these? No." They would have just gone. I had thought about, I was watching the weather, and I was going to pick some and stick them away in a cool place. Yeah. These will last in a vase, and this is feedback from my cut, five to six days. When you would make your trips and give the news to the different farms, what made you zero in on dahlias? They're gorgeous. What, what, what well, he, he gave me a couple of boxes, and I put them in my garden. And that's what did it, basically. That's what did it. I have uh, a couple hundred plants in my backyard as well. Uh, and I have regular customers that come every week faithfully. It's to almost like an addiction. Well, where are you located? Where is the... Um uh, 260 Highland Street in Holliston, mm -hmm. which is... Is that Route 16? Or no, no, it's... It's more towards the high school. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, right next to the Ashland town line. And that's it's where the Chestnut Street in Ashland, and Winthrop Street, and Medway coming from Medway. Well, that's not hard to find. No. And it's called Mayor's, they call it Mayor's Plantation. Somebody owns the property, right? Correct. But they said you can have a blast with the dahlias at it, right? I was his <coughs> mailman. Uh, <coughs> his father lived in a house when the father passed away he moved down from the main street i was his mailman on the main street and that's how he got to know you well uh, yes and then i did a story uh for my newspaper yeah. about his tree farm uh -huh. and it was a former vineyard um the vineyard went kaput um, was it a vineyard? You mean real vineyard? The wine was a... Yeah, they were uh, actually making wine. I would think here in New England it wouldn't be too... Well, no, it wasn't. That's no. why I think it... It went kaput. Kaput. Yeah. And uh, I saw the rows. Uh, there are 70 rows. They're 225 feet long. Yeah. Uh, the rows stretched out are 3.2 miles. Wow. Uh, yeah, well, I have to make three passes to mow. Uh, that and uh, the front section. So I have 15 miles of mowing. Um, that's my end of the bargain for using the land, keeping the property up. How long does it take you 
<clears throat> in a week, how many hours do you think you put in the mowing and the keeping everything <coughs> Mowing. Mm -hmm. I, I used to do it all in one shot nine years ago. Yeah. And now I've gotten nine years older, so I do it, so you do it. in three times. Yeah, sure. Um, oh, six, eight hours. A day. But I enjoy it. A day. Not a day. No. A week. A week. And this year I've had to mow every five or six days because we've had enough rain. So We're talking with Robert Blair, and he's known as the Mayor, Mayor's Plantation. He's the owner of Mayor's Plantation. Over in Holliston, growing dahlias. And again, I read about it in the newspaper, and I said, this is, this is not something you see every day. You know? It's, it's <laughs> something out, uh, done more out in uh, the Northwest, yeah. Washington and Oregon, because it's more temperate. Uh, and I don't think a lot of people grow these because they have to dig up the, the, tuber. the tuber. So thing. people are kind of lazy. But I think it's coming back in. They just started a uh, Dyga Society here uh, in Massachusetts uh, called the New England Dyga Society. Do you belong to that, Robert? Do you belong to that? I do. Oh, you do? I do. Is it a, like, where do they meet? Uh, well, they have different meetings, but they have a show uh, right after Labor Day. And they had the second annual show at Tower Hill in oh, West Boylston. Oh, not far at all. We've no. had them on the show before. Yeah, yeah so uh, it gives people a chance to see the different varieties. And someone like yourself, who's been doing it for nine years, would be a great mentor for somebody who's trying to learn how to do this. Robert, how could people get a hold of you if they'd like to? Uh, <laughs> you can call me on the telephone. I don't have a cell phone, okay. believe it or not. 508-429-6763. Okay. Uh, There'll be no flowers for weddings this year. <laughs> it's a little too late. Yeah. And uh, for those that have called me for next year, yeah. I have no idea what Mother Nature is going to bring us or what kind of crop I'll have. All I can tell people mm. is if you'd like flowers for your wedding, mm -hmm. uh, the best bet is to go to a florist, of course. Mm -hmm. It'll cost them an arm and a leg, but I know. peace of mind. Otherwise, they can come and and look in the field a uh, couple weeks a prior. That's not too bad, a couple weeks prior. I mean, I know a lot of brides, it's like, oh, that's so close, but you just do, besides weddings, do you get orders like that? Yeah, um, well, it's showers mm -hmm. and uh, receptions. Mm -hmm. uh, Reunions, yeah. Yeah, that type of thing. I would think there would be a big call for it because I'm sitting here and I'm getting to, to drink in all these gorgeous colors and I'm thinking, boy, I can think of a lot of places for these flowers. So you were a mailman for how many years? 37. 37. When you left high school, did you know you would do that? Uh, no. Um, I worked for my uncle a little bit and uh, a guy he had working said, why don't you take the test? I got the test, uh, took it. I was only there for seven eight months before i was drafted and oh. ended up in uh, vietnam so you went to Nam. Uh -huh. <coughs> thank you for your service what branch of the service were you army in? you were in the army artillery what um, year were you there 1970 to 71. okay you were one of the younger ones one of the younger ones i think that were in there yeah i was yeah. 19 when i yeah, got there I yeah think. i think a lot of the guys there are some guys hung out out there for quite a long time from what i learned through the years and then um, we just interviewed one of the uh, head people from uh, one of the VA centers, which they help counselor, counsel vets coming in with PTSD and things like that over in, in Worcester. And that's a big deal, and it's important. Mm. You know, you've got your vet center, you know, over in Worcester on Lincoln Street. We have one in Holliston now. Just open recently. What is it? Is it uh, a veteran center? A center a or medical? Of the VA. Or mental? Or is it medical part of the VA, or is it uh, psychological? That's what I that's so. the, what the leader of it in Worcester just sat mm -hmm. there yesterday, and, and we talked with her, and it's uh, over on Park Avenue, uh, called the Vet Centers, and it's psychological. If somebody and they have twenty three support groups in that building on Park Avenue, they have twenty three groups, everything from yoga to, I don't know what the guys were playing was it pool or whatever, but I think that's super. They're up on the ninth floor. I don't know about you. I'm not crazy about elevators. But I think for going for that, if I was a vet, and every, I'd be right there. I'd be like, I'm going to hold my breath. We're going to get to the top. We're going to get to that floor. But so now you did that, and you went, and then when you came back, you saw I went you, back to the post office. You went back to the PO, and you, you liked it. Uh, I, I did my own neighborhood. I had a walking route. Yeah. Uh, 
There was days out there that uh, weren't so nice. And dogs. But I was younger. No dogs got you though. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What do they carry? What do they carry now, Mace? Uh, it's a pepper spray. Yeah. 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 Some people don't keep their dogs under control. I love dogs and cats, but I mean, you know, so it's, I, maybe it's a thing of the past now more. More people are being much better about it. But boy, back to when I was growing up, that was a big deal. Uh, famous last words, uh, don't worry, he won't yeah, bite. Yeah, don't worry, he won't bite. <laughs> and then they turn around and say, that's the first time he ever did that. Yeah. I know, and you're there like, did you ever have to go to the ER with a bite, a dog bite? Well, actually, uh, I'd always confront the dogs and gonna bite me I'll chase you and I'll bite you back so and they uh, kind of backed up off of that no. so you were, then you left the post office did did you retire or were you too young to retire you just decided to leave no I retired when I was uh, 55 that's young well I went in the post office when I was 19 yeah well I was still 18 at the time yeah uh, that's that's young so how long did it take you to realize that, that you were into this farm routine well um, couple of three years after uh, I retired yeah. and uh, we actually uh, me and two other guys started our own newspaper oh you gotta talk about this now this is in Holliston what's it called again <coughs> Holliston reporter.com and that's been going on for how many years now uh, nine there you go and is it, is it like our Amendon Upton town crier is it like like a town a town based newspaper well I, uh, me uh, one of the original fellows, Bill Tobin, just passed away in May, and we sorely miss him. We don't, we didn't realize, you know, uh, but we cover the local selectmen's meetings. Yeah. Uh, we have the police log every week, yeah. uh, the fire log, uh, real estate. Um, is it online or is it? It's it, online. Only okay, online. So it's not on paper. Only online. Only online, and that works. It works. It works well. Uh, you like it? Are you the editor? No, uh, just the writer. I let the other guy uh, be the publisher, but yeah. I can publish too, so yeah. we're, we're equals. So you got into not only the dahlias and having these at the farm, but then you also got into having this newspaper. Yeah, and I'm involved in other things. Uh, I do the downtown, a lot of the downtown flowers. Mm -hmm. It's a branch of the American Legion called the Downtown Marigold Project. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we were just involved in um, something called America in Bloom, which uh, that group started five years ago. And we just uh, last week had the National Symposium in Holliston. How'd uh, that we go? had 200 people from across the country. Yeah. I think it was 32 different states. All due to marigolds. Uh, mm. And Holliston and Bloom. Yeah. Uh, with co-equal partners right. in that. And they all came. They stayed at the uh, Sheridan Tower in Framingham. They took a tour of Holliston, went into Boston for one night, yeah. went to uh, Elm Bank, uh, Wellesley College. Mm -hmm. uh, we had them for lunch under a, a big tent at Goodwill Park in Holliston. Yeah. We had uh, that man that passed away, his two sons, uh, portray uh, Paul Revere and William Dawes in oh. Boston Wow! Yeah. and they're from Holliston sure. and they came out and, uh, and on their horses uh, at the the lunch yeah. uh, which was great right. uh, oh <laughs> I can tell that you really enjoy this this is something that I, I like I don't like so much dealing with the customers uh, but I like battling against mother nature to see if I can get them to grow. <laughs> you like sort of like this tussle. Yeah. I'm going to make sure these grow this year. And last year I had a three, I bought a 3,000 gallon tank uh, because the year before was dry. A tank of water for these? Well, I bought the tank, then I had to fill it with water. Yeah. Out of a shallow well, and which goes dry in August. Yeah. And uh, we had to start using, uh, we put uh, drip hoses in seven rows. Mm -hmm. We started using the water in July, and it was all that water was gone in two and a half weeks. So that's I have to go back <laughs> to the drawing board. Yeah. And if I was a younger man, if I was in my thirties, but you know, should the man that owns the property pass away, yeah. then I'm off the property. Uh, so 
it's kind of fun. So in other words, if, if the person, God forbid, passes away who owns the farm, you won't be allowed to plant your dahlias anymore? They've more or less told me no. Oh, where would you go? Because you're so good at it. Um, I'd find some place. Maybe we're near where you live, maybe your backyard. Well, I have the backyard full of 200 plants. Of these? Of <laughs> yeah. the dahlias? Yeah. You've already got those there. Yeah. Oh, talk about a safety net. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a little stand in front of my house. I've always had a stand. Oh, so you people can stop by and, gra- and buy and them. And it's on the honor system. They can put the money in the jar. How honoring is it? Are they good? To- uh, only once in a while. They disappear. Uh, they, yeah. Yeah. How much would be a, like a bouquet be? Six dollars. That is more than reasonable. Yeah. Only six dollars? Six dollars. And you're right up there in Holliston. Right. <clears throat> I can get you down this way. <laughs> Honestly, you know, we, we this would be great. I mean, there are so many. Um, I would have you. Do you go to arts and crafts events too? No. Uh, this is a craft. It, the, the season is so short, really. If you're talking at the end of July mm. till now, and we've stretched it out a little bit here, mm. uh, you talk about two and a half months. Can you put them in a hot house over the winter? Will they survive? I, I have a greenhouse, and that's where these tubers get stored. Oh, okay, so um, you can that can go get stored over the winter just fine. Well, I I put them right on the ground in the greenhouse, which is unheated. Cover them with peat moss, blankets, then black plastic, which draws the heat in. Yeah, and they survive. I didn't know this will only be my third year that I've tried tried it yeah uh, I didn't know if it would work sure. because there's no heat in that greenhouse but I had something that got dropped in the greenhouse they would come up every year and I says if they can come up every yeah. year sure then I can put them in so Richard do you ever um do you ever mentor people uh, teach give like teaching workshops to teach people how to do this I <coughs> with all the things that I have going uh, I, <laughs> I don't have time, time. I think you'd be great at it. I don't have time. Um, Do you have them out there in front of your place right now for sale? Your bouquets? At my house? Yeah. Yeah. You have them right now. Let people. How can people find you if they want to buy them? We tell them where you're located. Uh, 57 School Street in Holliston. It's right downtown. Uh, and if you want them, even if he's not there, leave the money. It's like $6 for a bouquet. And take it home and enjoy it. How long do they last at home if I... Five to six days is what the customers tell me. Yeah. Um, you can take them, uh, and someone gave me heck this year for not doing it. Uh, when they're cut, put them in very, very hot, almost boiling water. It'll make them last a little longer. Is that true? When they get them home, they can cut the stems, yeah. change the water. Mm-hmm. Um, does it's it only going to make them last a day or two longer. That doesn't sound normal to me to put a bouquet of flower <coughs> stems. It into seals uh, the bottom of the stem. Uh, or you can put a little bleach in the water. Yeah. Uh, and it kills the bacteria on the stem. That's what kills them so early. Yeah. I, the sli- is the, are we talking about that slimy thing if I get a bouquet? Uh-huh. No one, Okay. I've taken them up, and sometimes I try to preserve as many little flowers yeah, as I can. It's There's a slime. On yeah. I cut them is. at an angle, but it still can slime. Yeah. So that's bacteria. Yeah. So those of us who get a beautiful bouquet like this, if we put a little bit of uh, bleach into the water, it'll keep them from sliming uh-huh. up and it's dying. It's just uh, almost like a disinfectant. What a cool trick that is. Did you, ha- <coughs> did you, study, did you have to study this at all? I, you know, you read a little bit. Uh, about dahlias, uh, you, know, that you was just it. learn after a while. People will tell you. Were you surprised that you caught on to it like that and loved it? No, uh, I mean it's a. Oh. Believe it or not, it's a lot of work uh, just planting these um, oh. and then digging them up. The fun part is cutting them and seeing that your efforts were not for naught. Now, if people want to stop by, he gave you his address. If you want to stop by, when they buy them, are they? Do you have them in like knotted? I have them in an elastic band. Okay. Uh, usually, they're not as big as this. They're smaller, maybe eight, ten dahlias per sure. bunch. Yeah. And that's how you sell them. Yeah. And 
you have your his assistants. You teach them how to make sure that you don't put one side on one side and one side on the other side. Right. Just for the colors. And these are all dahlias. I wouldn't have known. Them are all dahlias. There I, are so many varieties that, uh, you know. I would have figured it was different species of flowers. No, in no all dahlias. I love the, the pink, the hot pink, the purple, and the yellow. Oh, the yellow sticks out. Yeah. Uh, I think that's really, really good. we got about five minutes. So now. And that's just a little selection. What time does the, do you, what, when do you open the, the farm over <coughs> in Holliston during the week? I mean, when it comes, it's going to be next May, maybe? Yeah, we, we're, I'm, I've shortened my hours now. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be open this weekend, but, you know, the frost is, Yeah. Mm -hmm. I normally depend upon the frost coming Columbus Day. Yeah. Columbus Day night, we almost had it. Uh, yeah. Uh, Western Mass, Worcester County got it. So we're. You're doing good so far, but it's going to be, it's on the line right now, isn't it? Well, we're already digging up the tubers there uh, to get them ready to put to bed. So uh, I would think, you know, uh, kids studying in college, um, is it agriculture? Would love to learn this type of thing. You could teach so much. That tuber thing, I had no clue that you have to dig them up. Then you let them sit over the winter uh -huh. and keep them all hidden. Then in May, you plant your dahlias and they well, come up. In May, <coughs> I'll look to see and I'll put my glasses on to see the sprouts and then I'll cut it and since it takes us a month to plant them the ones at the end of the pile in the greenhouse will be coming up through the peat moss so I so I what is this main, what, what's the main stem Robert what what is that the thing you pull it up from the ground from uh-huh we cut it off yeah uh, get rid of the top part of the plant and that's it. And these little buggers down here are not actual plant flowers in waiting. That's just part of the tulip. That's part of uh, their nourishment for yeah, the sprouts true. that will come up. That's their food for over the winter. So you're going to be planting this very soon, right? Next that's May. They, okay, yeah. Okay, i got to get straight. Right. So this we guy, don't plant them in the fall. No, are you going to keep him under wraps this winter, this particular one? Uh -huh. Okay, so he'll be going back, he'll be going under cover, like a bear in hibernation. Uh -huh. This tuber will go. Robert, this is terrific. We've been talking with Robert Blair, and he is the he is the owner of the Mayor Plantation. He grows dahlias over in Holliston. And one more time, how can people reach you? 508-429-6763. And do you have an answering machine if they miss you? I do. He does. He's been in the newspaper. I saw this, as I've said before. I thought, this is really fantastic. You have, all total, how many plants, including at your home? How many do you think? Well, I, we take, took a guess, uh, probably 2,700, 3,000. Uh, we had planted 10,000 this God. spring. I lost that many, mm -hmm. uh, 7,500. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to replace them. I'll replace them by cutting some of these up, yeah. and I will buy... Some new ones, which in the winter I start looking at the catalogs mm -hmm. and. That's it. Talk I about patience. Talk about having the patience to do this type of thing and and dedication. Thank you, Robert, for being on the show. You will. And welcome, maybe Jane. when it comes, uh, let's see, what June or July, come back on. We can tell people that they're sprouting. Right, they'll be coming up by then. Yes, and we can get more people out there to take a look at this. This is wonderful. Yeah, people come uh, take photographs all the time. Oh, yeah. I have some people come paint. I had one guy looking for spiders this year on the plants. Why? Uh, he's into spiders. <laughs> you get all kinds of people. I can see the artists, the photographers, but a guy looking for spiders? Yeah. What does he do with them? Boil but, them and eat them? No, he's a photographer. Yeah, and he, that's what he does. That's what he does. There you go. They're out there. <laughs> Beautiful dolly in front of somebody, and he's looking for spiders. That's why it's like so, the person you give good news to, but they want to hear the real bad news. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with You're us. You're welcome. We'll see you next time. I'll be my guest. Great job, my friend. Shooting star